KR Audio High Vacuum Tube. Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a couple of boxes here and they happen to have some vacuum tubes in them. Some spec sheets from the Czech Republic. These are KT88 tubes. A warranty sheet, a diagram of the connections, and a complete spec sheet. Okay, so let's get one of these out and look at it. KR Audio High Vacuum Tube KT88. And it specifies that these were manufactured in 2018. From the Czech Republic. 0796. I wonder if that's a serial number. Look at that. 0829. And in the other box. zero eight one nine with a little handwritten sticker I'm not sure what TR maybe zero eight two one a L one L I'm not quite sure so I also have a box of other tubes, Golden Dragon, and then two white boxes. The Golden Dragon, we have ECC83T, another ECC83T, and an EF86 Siemens, new old stock. And last, but certainly not least, another EF86 Siemens, new old stock. So now, let's see what these guys go into. Here it is, the eggshell amplifier. There are the four driver tubes, and it looks like a Nixie display over here. Power, standby, a couple of fuses, a standard computer cord input, three inputs per channel, and a 4 ohm or 8 ohm selectable output. So now my customer just ordered this amplifier from Poland. He received it, set it up, I assume followed the instructions to the letter, and it does absolutely nothing. It's totally dead. So we're going to tear into this and see if we can figure out what is going on with this. So looking at the bottom of this eggshell amplifier is a model TANQA.1 possibly. I assume that the TANQA.1 is actually a 1 because of the way this person wrote their 1s on the power in 110 volts. So the date is 11-2019. This thing is brand spanking new because I am filming this video on November 28th, 2019. Look at that, all point to point wiring. I mean, I would say, why can't they do this today? But this thing is practically brand spanking new. Look at those big power resistors. Now, I believe they have some kind of lighting scheme going on here because they have these two little inverter set up here. So it may light the tubes somehow. I'm not quite sure yet. Let's try to get this baby up and running. There's the preamp circuitry. Once again, all point to point wiring. So there is the one channel of the preamp. Look at that, all point to point. Now look at that, there's the filament leads all twisted together to minimize interference. Man, look at all the heat shrink they used on here. There's those big 10 watt resistors where they connect to the power tube. Oh, just look at that. Well, hopefully this will be a repair. It's a very, very good looking amplifier. There's the specs on the power transformer. And we'll get over here to one of the output driver transformers. This connector right here is where the fan actually connects. I mean, this company definitely took the extra time to build this thing correctly with like 1950s design criteria in 2019. I mean, just look how clean this is. You just don't see that anymore.
We'll just spend a moment looking around in here. Look at that. All the effort they went to zip tied the capacitors together. Very beautiful, very good soldering by the way. Let's go peek at the other channel real up close like. Look at those big diodes, rectifier diodes. Twisted pair once again to minimize, minimize interference. Alright, well let's start and troubleshoot this unit and see what's going on with it. There it is, there's the wide open view. So I didn't even notice this on the first go around, but look at this module over here. I believe this is going to be a Bluetooth receiver module. And look at that, it's set up, there's the volume control right there. And it is a motorized drive volume control that has a motor attached to it. And those shielded cables going to the individual high low and wipers are what control the volume level. Here is a select switch to select inputs and outputs most likely. I'm not quite sure. I don't have the manual on this unfortunately. But they branch off and they go practically everywhere. Let's follow those back here. Those go to the two terminals on the back right there. So that would let you select an input one, two, or three. That's what's going on up here with the selector switch. Anyhow, I'm going to plug it in, power it up, and look at the input current to see if it's drawing any power whatsoever. So I realize the video is skewed a little bit because my uh, Syncor PR57 is sitting here at an angle, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure the standby and the power switches are in the off mode. Now I'm on the 1.5 amp input, 175 watts maximum. So what that means is all the way over here, this is 1.5 amps and 175 watts input. So we'll power that on. I'll turn the main power on. No change. Turn the standby on. Absolutely nothing. Okay, so we have verified the customer's complaint. Power on, standby on. Absolutely nothing. It should do something. So next, let's go ahead and try to measure some voltages in this guy and see what we come up with. So unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have to do a lot to this guy. Here's the power switch right here. And if I tip this up, take a look at these two leads right here. They are not connected to absolutely anything. So over here is the standby switch. Same thing, look at that. Those leads are just laying totally loose. I don't know if they just forgot to plug them in at the factory over there in Poland. I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and connect those up because that's the 110 volt mains input that comes out of here in an orange lead and a dark blue lead. So we'll go ahead and connect those up over here. And then now the standby connects this 350 volt output, which is obviously going to be the plate voltage for the tube. So let's go ahead and plug them in and see what happens. So it's really going to be hard to show because I'm sure my fingers are going to get right in the way. Those are plugged in. Let's make sure that the inputs are plugged in good and they are very nice and tight. Okay, so let's go ahead and reconnect the main power switch now. So I'm going to swing the orange wire up and out of the way. And I got that one going on. So we'll just add a little bit of pressure. Very tight spaces. You grab a little needle nose plier and get in here, try to push it on there really good. Okay, that one's on good. Swing the orange one back around. And it even has marks, like it had a needle nose plier on it at one time. Got to get the angle just right. Okay, plugged on. Okay, here we are back at the Syncor PR57 AC Powerite. It's a Variac and an isolation transformer. 
Okay, so power on. So now if we see any meter movement whatsoever, we know that we are making connection. So power on. And let's turn the standby on. Charge up those caps. It's probably up to about 450 volts at this point. You can see the current's going down as the preamp tubes warm up. So standby off. main power off. So let's go ahead and put the output tubes in it and I will actually connect it to a signal source and see what happens. So I have my little MP3 player connected here. There it is, playing. See the tubes are glowing, preamp tubes. The Nixie says one, two, three. Those are the input selectors. That is freaking awesome. It's working perfectly. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on the eggshell tank a1 dead repair if you enjoyed this video please consider making a donation to my youtube homepage with the paypal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715 don't forget to subscribe like and ring that bell to get future notifications remember with your help we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin everybody have a great day thanks for watching bye bye